Hello everyone, it's Spurs Reading 96 here and welcome to another Train Sim World video on my channel. Today I've decided to go in depth on yet another North American route, but with a difference. This is not a route suggestion video. No, this is an actual route that is coming to Train Sim World 2, when, at this moment in time, we do not know, but the route in question is the Clinchfield Railroad. This route is a historical route, the first historical route we've had in the Train Sim World franchise since the Tees Valley Line released in uh, June of 2019. So it's quite nice to take a break from all the modern routes and loco add-ons we've had, and it's nice to just play something different, you know, old school if you like. Um, and this route is certainly a, a worthy route to have in the Train Sim World franchise because uh, not just from its driving characteristics, but also from a visual perspective, uh, certainly on Train Simulator, it looks uh, absolutely uh, stunning. I'm, I'm sure you can agree with me on that one. Um, but for those of you who are maybe unsure of what uh, the Clinchfield Railroad is, as well as the actual route we're getting to Train Sim World, then uh, let me explain. So the Clinchfield Railroad, or often called the Rio Grande of the East for its spectacular scenery and challenging mountain railroading, uh, the Train Sim World route will recreate uh, its existence in its final independent years of the early 1980s, and will extend from uh, Clinchfield's northern terminus in Elkhorn City, Kentucky, approximately 42 miles to St. Paul, Virginia. Uh, the Clinchfield was a coal hauler extraordinaire, and the upcoming route will include a variety of lineside coal mines, tipples, and loaders. Built to exceptionally high and modern engineering standards of the time, and still pretty <laughs> pretty uh, impressive to this day, the Clinchfield Railroad was home to more than 50 tunnels, the longest and most famous of which was 7,854 foot long Sandy Ridge Tunnel. Um, the small town of Dant itself, which is in Virginia, was the central point of coal operations on the Clinchfield Railroad's north end. Dant was home to the famed First Baptist Church, which uh, quite literally <laughs> had uh, the Clinchfield main line on its front doorstep. Uh, Dant also hosts a busy engine terminal and a yard. In terms of the locomotives that are coming with the Train Sim World route, we are getting the um, very iconic, if not one of the most iconic locomotive designs ever, the uh, EMD F7, and also the workhorse SD40. Now, which livery they're going to be in, I don't know. This route on train simulator has two livery options. You've got the yellow and grey, uh, and you've also got black and yellow liveries. The route also features, of course, a lot of rolling stock, including 70 and 100 ton coal hoppers, a variety of freight cars to pull tonnage in manifest freights, and it also comes with a caboose. So it sounds great, doesn't it? I'm sure you're excited for the Clinchfield Railroad as much as I am. I'm more of a historical fan of Train Sim World than the modern stuff, uh, mainly because they, they seem to get, Dovetail Games seem to get the historical routes more correct and more reliably working compared to the modern stuff. But there we go, that's the way, that's the, way the crow flies. But I want to go a bit further with this route. What about locomotive add-ons? Because the Train Simulator version has a locomotive add-on, and the Train Sim World version is also missing uh, one particular locomotive that was featured with the Train Simulator base route. So I thought, well, why don't we have a look at that and see what are the chances of these locomotives coming to Train Sim World 2 as possible locomotive add-ons. So the first locomotive we're taking a look at is the actual official locomotive add-on, and that is the uh, General Electric U36C diesel locomotive, or also known as uh, the U-boat. <laughs> the U36C, a 3,600 horsepower six-axle locomotive, was produced by General Electric from 1971 through to 1975, and Clinchfield acquired seven units in 1971, the numbers range from 3600 to 3606. Typical of the era, the U36C employed a traditional engineer's control stand, so uh, from the exterior as well as the interior, it's going to look pretty authentic to the real-world locomotive. In terms of other statistics, it weighs nearly £400,000 and exerted £92,500 of tractive force. In terms of rolling stock it comes with, uh, it has a... Clinchfield 100 ton 4 bay coal hopper and uh, Clinchfield's well known Santa FE style Kubula caboose. I think this will be a worthy add on to have in Train Sim World. Uh, it's a very powerful locomotive, it's something different, it's a different driving experience, quite challenging as well. And uh, I like the look of this, particularly in this dark livery, it looks very imposing and menacing. And 
Yeah, I like it, and I would love to see it in Train Sim World, but let's take a look at the other contender that could also be a locomotive add-on. Now this locomotive is actually included with the Train Simulator version of Clinchfield as standard, but in Train Sim World 2 it will not. Why, I do not know, because I feel this locomotive plays a pivotal role in the overall experience of the Clinchfield Railroad, and that is a switcher known as the EMD GP7. Now, uh, you can operate coal unloading and coal unloading procedures in the train simulator version, that is, in either pairs or in or as a lone locomotive. And obviously, from a visual perspective, uh, it certainly is unique, isn't it? It's got that tank engine style appearance. You can compare it to the Class 20 from a, visibili from a visibility perspective, you know, in terms of the long hood part of the locomotive that was originally perceived as the front of the locomotive but obviously when the engineers and designers found this to be a problem you know the visibility aspect uh, they attended to do more services looking out the back which is now perceived as the new front of the locomotive so uh, I think it would be a great locomotive add-on to have you know realistically from an authenticity point of view these these mainly were the locomotives that were conducting the coal loading slash coal unloading procedures and I think it will be a, a nice challenging locomotive to have. I mean, people question me, why do you enjoy shunters? What do you like about it? I like the fact that it's it's a small, think of it like a puzzle. It's it's a small part of the puzzle, but it's one very important piece of the puzzle. And that's what I like about the, the GP7. And I would love to see it in Train Sim World. It looks unique, you know, um, of course, you've got to contend with the visibility. It's got the performance to match, you know, loading heavy coal trains or unloading heavy coal trains. So uh, I would like to see it in Train Sim World 2. Um, but which one would you like to see in Train Sim World 2? Would you like to see the GP7 switcher? Or would you like to see the U36C in the game? Or would you like to see both as one bumper double locomotive pack? I'll be interested to know your thoughts in the comments below. So of course, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like. And please subscribe if you are new for more up-to-date Train Sim World news and content from me. And as always, I will see you next time. Thank you very much. Take care.